The Five Hundred Hats of Bartholomew Cubbins by Dr. Seuss A Vanguard Press Book To Chrysanthemum Pearl Aged 89 months Going on 90 In the beginning, Bartholomew Cubbins didn't have 500 hats. He had only one hat. It was an old one that belonged to his father, and his father's father before him, a.k.a. his grandfather. It was probably the oldest and plainest hat in the whole kingdom of dead, where Bartholomew Cubbins, the page boy, lived. <laughs> Soon to be page boy lived, but Bartholomew liked it, especially because of the feather that always pointed up straight in the air. The kingdom of Did was ruled by King Derwin. His palace stood high on top of a mountain. From his balcony, he looked down over the houses of all his subjects. First, over the spires of the noblemen's castles, across the broad roofs of the rich men's mansions, then over the little houses to townsfolk and to the huts of the farmers far off in the fields. It was a mighty view, and it made King Derwin feel mighty important. Far off in the fields, on the edge of a cranberry bog, stood the cubbin of <laughs> hut of the Cubbins family. From the small door, Bartholomew looked across the huts of the farmers to the houses of the town, houses of the townsfolk, and then to the Richmond in mansions and the noblemen's castles up to the great towering place, the palace of the king. It was exactly the same view that King Derwin saw from his balcony, but Bartholomew saw it backward. It was a mighty view, but it made Bartholomew Cubbins feel mighty small, and we never see the rest of Bartholomew's family. Just after sunrise one Saturday morning, Bartholomew started for town. He felt very happy. A pleasant breeze whistled through the feather of his ear in his hat. His great in his right hand he carried a basket it of cranberries to sell the market. He was anxious <laughs> anxious to sell them quickly and bring the money back home to his parents. He walked faster and faster until he got to the gates of the town. The sound of silver trumpets rang for the air. Hoofbeats clattered on the cobbled streets. Clear it away! Clear it away! Make way for the king! All the people rushed for the sidewalks. They drove their carts right up over to the curb zones. Bartholomew clutched, clutched his basket tighter. Around the corner dashed fifty trumpeters on yellow-robed horses. Behind them, on crimson-robed horses, came the king's own guards. Hot! Hot! Soft to the king! <laughs> clear the way! Clear the way! Hot! Soft to the king! Mm, shouted the captain of the king's old guards. On came the king's carriage, white, gold, and purple. Rumble. It rumbled like thunder through the narrow street. It swept past Bartholomew, and suddenly its mighty brake mm, shrieked. shrieked. It lurched, and then it stopped. The whole procession stood still. Bartholomew could hardly believe what he saw. He threw the side of the window of the carriage. The king himself was staring back, straight back at him. Bartholomew began to tremble. <laughs> back up! The king sh commanded the royal coachman. The royal coachman shouted to the royal horses. The king's old guard shouted to their crimson-roped horses. The trumpeters shouted to their yellow-roped horses. Very slowly, the whole procession back down the street until the king's carriage stopped right in front of Bartholomew. The king leaned from his carriage window and fixed his eye fixed his eyes directly at Bartholomew. Well Well he demanded. Bartholomew shook with fright. <laughs> I ought to say something, he thought to himself, but he could think of nothing to, to say. Well, demanded the king again, do you or do you not take off your hat before you're a king? Yes, indeed, sire, answered Bartholomew, feeling greatly relieved. 
I do take off my hat before my king. Then take it off this very instant, command the king. <laughs> off this very instant, command the king, more loudly than before. But sire, my hat is off, answered Bartholomew. Such impudence, shouted the king, shaking an angry finger. How dare you stand there and tell me your hat is off? I don't like to say you're wrong, sire, said Bartholomew very politely. But you see, my hat is off, and he showed the hat. And he came the hat in his hand. If that's your hat in your hand, what's that on your head? demanded the king. <gasps> on my head? gasped Bartholomew. There did seem to be something on his head. He reached up his hand and touched the hat. <sighs> the face of Bartholomew Cubbins turned very red. It's a hat, sire, b -b -b but it can't be mine, he stammered. Someone behind me must have put it on my head. I don't care how it got there, said the king. You take it off. The king sat back in his carriage. Bartholomew quickly snatched off the hat. He stared at it in astonishment. It was exactly the same as his own hat. The same size, the same color, and exa had exactly the same fetter. By the crown of my fathers, roared the king, again leaning out of the carriage window. Did I or did I not command you to take off your hat? You did, sire. I took it off. I took it off twice. Nonsense! There is still a hat upon your head. Another hat? Again, Marfarmu reached up his hand and touched the hat. Come, come, what's the meaning of all this? Demanded the king, his face purple with rage. I don't know, sire, answered Marfarmu. It never happened to me before. <laughs> the king was now shaking with such fury that the carriage rocked on its wheels and the royal coachman could hardly sit in the seat. Arrest this impure trickster, shouted the king to the captain of the king's own guards. We'll teach him to take off his hat. The royal coachman cracked his long whip. The king's carriage swung forward up the street toward Post. But the captain of the king's own guards leaned down from his big brass saddle and grabbed Barfarmu by his shirt. Away he flew Barfarmu. Use basket. The cranberries bounced over the cobblestones and rolled down into the gutter. With a jangling of spurs and a clatter of horseshoes, the captain and Barfarmu sped up the winding street toward the palace, out of the narrow streets, and up on the hill. On up the hill, Barfarmu clung to the captain's broad back. On and on they galloped, past the bright gardens of the wealthy merchants, higher and higher up the mountain, on past the walls of this is on a nobleman's castles. Flop! Mm, the sharp wind whisked off Bartholomew's hat. Flop! Flop! Two more fell off. Flop! 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 Flew another. Uh, flew another and another. Four, five, six, seven. Bartholomew kept counting as the <laughs> hats came faster and faster. Lords and ladies stared from the windows of their turrets, wondering what a strange stream of hats could mean. Over the palace drawbridge, they sped, through the great gates and into the courtyard. The captain pulled in his reins. His majesty waits in the throne room, said the guard, saluting the captain. The throne room! The captain dropped Bartholomew to the ground. I'd certainly hate to be in your shoes, he said, shaking his head sadly. For a moment, Bartholomew was terribly frightened. Still, the king could do nothing dreadful to punish me, he thought to himself, because I really haven't done anything wrong. It would be cowardly to feel afraid. Bartholomew drew back his shoulders and marched straight ahead into the palace. Follow the black carpet to the guard at the door. All through the long hallway, Bartholomew could hear the muttering of voices behind heavy windows. He won't take off his hat. No, he won't take off his hat. Barfarm, you <laughs> walked on until he stood in the very middle of a throne room. The king, in a long scarlet robe, was seen in his throne. Beside him stood Sir Alaric, keeper of the king's records. He wore in his belt, instead of a sword, wore a long silver ruler. Lords and noblemen of the court stood solemn and silent.
The king looked down at Bartholomew severely. Young man, I'm going to give you one more chance. Will you take off your hat for your king? Your majesty, I will, said Bartholomew as politely as he possibly could. But I'm afraid it won't do any good. And he took off his hat. And it didn't do any good. Another hat saw on Bartholomew's head. He took off hat after hat after hat after hat until he was standing in the middle of a great pile of hats. The lords and noblemen were so astonished he could even he couldn't even speak. Such a thing had never happened in the throne before. Heavens said Sir Alaric, keeper of the records. Blinking behind his triangular spectacles. He's taken all 45. And there were three more down the town, said the king. And you must set on 87 more to blow off my head as we galloped up the hill, said Bartholomew, trying to be helpful. 135 hats. <gasps> Most unusual, said Sir Alaric, writing <laughs> it down on a long scroll. Come, come! said the king impatiently. Sir Alaric, what do you make of all this nonsense? Very serious nonsense, your majesty, answered Sir Alaric. I advise you to call in an expert on hats. Excellent, agreed the king. Oh, God, fetch in Sir Snips. Make, make of hats for all the fine lords. In the throne room marched the smallest man, wearing the tallest hat that Bartholomew had ever seen. It was Sir Snips. Instead of a sword, he wore at his side a large pair of scissors. Take a look at this boy's hat, commanded the king. Sir Snips looked at Bartholomew's <laughs> cubbin's hat and sniffed in disgust. Then he turned to the king and bowed stiffly. Your Majesty, I, Sir Snips, am my I am the maker of hats for all the fine lords. I make hats of cloth of gold, fine silks, gems, and ostrich plumes. You ask me what I think of this ordinary hat? Pooh! It's the most ordinary hat I've ever set eyes on. In that case, it should be very simple for you to take it off, said the king. Simple, indeed mumbles Sir Snips haughtily, and, standing on his tiptoes, he pushed his putty thumb at Bartholomew's hat and knocked it to the floor. Immediately, another appeared on Bartholomew's hat. Screamies! screamed Sir Snips, leaping in the air higher than he was tall. Then he turned and ran, shrieking, out of the throne room. Dear me, said the king, looking very puzzled. If Snips can't do it, this must be more than or a hat. One hundred and thirty-six, wrote Sir Alaric, wrinkling his brow. Your Majesty, I advise that you call in your wise men. A fine idea, said the king. Oh, guard, bring me Nad. Nad knows about everything in all my kingdom. <laughs> in came an old, old man. He looked at the hat on Bartholomew's head, and he looked at the pile of hats on the floor. Nad, my wise man, can you take off his hat? asked the king. Nad shook his head solemnly. Solemnly, no. Then fetch me the father of Nad, commanded the king. He knows about everything in all my kingdom and in all the world beyond. In came an even older man, but when he looked at the hat on Bar his hats, but father of Nad merely locked his fingers across his beard and said nothing. Then bring me the father of the father of Nad, a.k.a. the grandfather of Nad, ordered the king. He knows about everything in all my kingdom, in all the world beyond, and in all other worlds that may happen to be. Then came the oldest man of them all, but he just looked at Bartholomew and nibbled nervously at the end of his beard. Does this mean there is no one in the whole, my whole kingdom who can take off this boy's hat? Bell the king in a terrifying voice. 